Now, the first phase of the 18th Lok Sabha elections have concluded with 65.4% voter turnout compared to the 70% turnout recorded in 2019. Now, this is because several states have seen a dip in voter turnout. A Tamil Nadu, which is the first state to complete polling, saw a 2% dip in turnout from 72 to 70%. Assam and Chhattisgarh see a positive response with a higher voter turnout than 2019. And Manipur, interestingly, has seen a drop of 10%, which could be seen both as a drawback or a positive considering the months of ethnic strife in the state. Meanwhile, Rajasthan bearing the brunt of the sun. Did the heat affect the voters this time? We'll discuss this and more. I'm being joined by my colleagues uh, Harsha, Sam, Ratnadeep and Nazir. Let me open uh, Harsha joining us from Jaipur at this point. Uh, uh, Harsha, now we're seeing that in Rajasthan there has been a dip uh, of uh, voter turnout, especially, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, when it comes to campaigning. Uh, there was huge campaigns that both parties, uh, uh, major parties, Congress and BJP took out there. How can we perceive this drop? Well, you know, traditionally what people say is that if there's a drop in voter turnout, it means more votes for the Congress and less for the BJP. That's how people usually see it. Uh, the committed voter is not coming out and uh, people are not so enthused by the election. Uh, there's also an absence of a wave. Uh, that's what people usually say. Of course, it could um, also mean, like you're saying, the heat that kept people away. Uh, but also somewhere, I think uh, there is a sense on the ground in Rajasthan that the BJP is in a strong position, but a lot of their candidates will not rope home with huge margins like they did last time. Uh, two lakhs, three lakhs, those were the kind of margins we saw uh, in 2019. In 2024, I think local factors have dominated uh, and we will see a narrowing down of margins. Also, you know, the caste arithmetic is definitely predominant. It's a predominant factor in this election. And when a caste arithmetic uh, comes into play and there's no overriding wave in that sense, then again what happens is the votes get kind of splintered. Uh, uh, the votes get splintered, there is no enthusiasm, people are not getting together and going out in large numbers to vote for uh, 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 one big issue or one big uh, sort of uh, political narrative. And in that case, when people vote uh, along these lines, then the, uh, then the interest in, in voting is a little less, people are not so enthused, of course. And that's the reason why uh, uh, the caste arithmetic becoming a dominant factor splinters the votes in many senses. And that's why I'm saying I think you will see the, ma uh, the margins between the Congress and the BJP narrowing down. And of course, it was wedding season also. A lot of people were busy with weddings. In fact, it is wedding season in Rajasthan till, uh, uh, you know, uh, June. Uh, and this is a time when there are lots and lots of weddings happening. We saw that bride and groom, uh, you know, who just got married, came, uh, voted and then went, carried on with the rest of the rituals. Uh, so wedding season, the heat, these were some of the reasons um, that also co contributed to voters' apathy in the first phase in Rajasthan. Absolutely. Stay on with us, Harsha. Let me uh, uh, go across to my colleague Ratnadeep, who's joining us. Ratnadeep, now, in the Northeast, increase in voter turnout in Assam from 74 to 76 and a negligible decline in Tripura. Uh, but Manipur, in fact, saw a huge drop of voter turnout from 82.7 in 2019 to 72.2, uh, despite the special provisions for displaced people as well. That's right. In fact, uh uh, I would like to point out uh, that in Tripura, this 81% which is a dip from the previous number, but among all the 102 seats which have gone to polls yesterday, Tripura actually registered highest uh, voter turnout and uh, watchers believe that this high voter turnout might be in favour of the ruling BJP. Uh, same is the case for Assam where already the Chief Minister Himanta Bishwa Sharma is claiming that all the five seats in Upper Assam which have gone to polls uh, would uh, be with the BJP. Uh, so therefore, uh, one has to wait and watch whether in Jorhat, uh, Congress leader Gaurav Gogoi has been able to put up a fight or not. Uh, also in Arunachal Pradesh, if you look, the turnout is, was good despite inclement weather conditions. There have been rains in some part of Arunachal Pradesh. So therefore, uh, there is uh, in Arunachal Pradesh also what watchers tell us that this uh, seems to be, uh, uh, you know, favoring the BJP. But what is important to note is Manipur. Now, Manipur, the uh, deep in voter, uh, uh, voter turnout was expected given the fact that the state is yet to come out of uh, totally of last year's ethnic violence. But if you see the arrangements which were made, uh, special polling booths were made for uh, nearly 25,000 people who got displaced. In those booths, about 90% polling have, uh, has taken place. So therefore, the people who got displaced because of violence have actually come out to vote. So they wanted to perhaps make a statement through the vote. However, there were 
uh, you know, uh, at least half a dozen uh, incidents of uh, violence, firing near a polling booth, uh, allegations of, uh, you know, uh, booth capturing, proxy voting by armed people. In fact, at least four uh, EVMs were damaged. In fact, Congress has lodged complaints about at least 30 polling stations where they want repolling to be done. We have to see whether uh, EC, uh, you know, heeds to it or not. But how overall, if you see Manipur, then uh, this was an expected line that the turnout might come down. But what is important is that in the outer Manipur seat, which is voting in two phases, part of it has voted yesterday. There, uh, the turnout was far lesser than the uh, inner Manipur seat. Uh, so, we will have to wait and watch how the turnout would be for outer Manipur for the other uh, part which will vote on uh, the, uh, phase two. But what is interesting to note in northeast are other factors like in Nagaland, you have in the eastern Nagaland region, six districts, about 4 lakh voters, none of them turn out to vote. In six districts, which comprises of uh, 20 assembly constituencies of, the, of a 60 member assembly in Nagaland, none of those 20 uh, uh, MLAs also turned out because there was a uh, you know, uh, shutdown called by the eastern Nagaland people's organization who were miffed with center given the fact that they wanted a, a separate administrative ter territory uh, with more financial uh, you know autonomy and that uh, uh, you know that deal did not come through before the elections and therefore uh, there was uh, already uh, the, the preparation that uh, the people uh, would abstain from voting but in this way it is something very unprecedented and therefore the turnout in Nagaland has been uh, overall turnout has been dismal but if you look at state polls as well, Arunachal Pradesh did see a good turnout and in Sikkim also the turnout was good. There were some uh, violence, cases of violence, uh, sporadic cases of violence in Sikkim. Uh, remember in this Himalayan state of Sikkim, which has only 32 member assembly, there is a tough fight between the ruling Sikkim Krantikari Morcha. Right. Its Chief Minister Prem Singh Tamang is contesting from two seats and the main opposition, the Sikkim Democratic Front, uh, led by uh, Pawan Kumar Chamling, but Bai Chung Bhutia, India's former footballer, is also a, a, you know, a top leader of the party. So there, uh, you know, away from the media glare, there was an intense fight and that right. reflected in the voting uh, as well in Sikkim. So this was the overall picture, but the high turnout in areas like Tripura, like Assam, which are stronghold of the BJP suggests that the BJP has an edge. However, there is a reason of worry in Manipur, not only given the fact that there were violence, there were low turnout, but there is also a close fight at least in inner Manipur seat and one, we have to wait and watch what would right. be the result. Right, uh, stay on with us. Let me, in fact, uh, go across to my colleague Sam Daniel joining us from uh, Chennai. Uh, Sam, now there's been a dip in voter turnout from 72.4 to 70 percent in Tamil Nadu. Now, can this be perceived as people being content with the DMK government or the other way around? Arti, at the moment, it's at 69.46. The Election Commission mm -hmm. has revised the figures. This dynamic and this could still further change. But at the moment, it looks like it's a 3% dip compared to the 2019 voter turnout. Chennai and Tutukudi have registered low voter turnout between 53 and 59.9%. Three reasons being attributed. One, politically, they say this is a sign of clear absence of pro or anti-wave against any one particular party. And the ruling DMK interprets this as status quo, which means in 2019, they had swept the polls, winning 38 of the 39 seats in Tamil Nadu. And they hope this time too, with the, their formidable alliance continuing intact, as they call it, uh, they hope to retain that kind of a sweep or repeat that kind of sweep. On other hand, there could be three other reasons. One is the extreme heat wave conditions across Tamil Nadu. Secondly, general voter apathy, particularly in cities like Chennai. And thirdly, it was a long weekend, particularly the first time voters, the young voters, have chosen to stay away, perhaps go out on a vacation or just stay at home chilling. These are the other factors uh, which could have attributed to the low voter turnout. On the other hand, the other two parties as well, the opposition, the AIADMK, uh, argues that there is a clear anti-incumbency and they also hope to make inroads and reclaim the lost ground last time. The BGP, which otherwise has a negligible presence, still counts on Prime Minister Modi's recent rally saying that there is a silent but an increase in support for the Saffron Party and they too hope to increase their vote share or win a few seats. We'll have to wait for the ultimate on the 4th of June, I think.
Right, so I'm, uh, stay on with us. Uh, in fact, I'm being joined at this point by Amitabh Tawari, political strategist, as well as a senior journalist Aditi Fadnis. Uh, we'll, uh, in fact, rope them in to discuss uh, the an and analyze the voter turnout uh, overall. But first, let's take a look at Jammu and Kashmir. My colleague Nazir joins us from Srinagar. Uh, Nazir, a slight drop in Jammu and Kashmir's voter turnout, although a high turnout was expected in the first phase. 68% uh, of people turned up from the 70% in the previous elections. Uh, but on the ground, when you spoke to voters, they seemed enthusiastic. Well, if we see, it is a very high voter turnout. Just it is less, though, less than 2% what it was in 2019. But remember the weather factor. There was heavy rain, first in Doda, Banihal area, which actually impacted the voter, uh, voter turnout in the morning. But in the, in the evening, we have heavy rains in Kutwa, Udhampur, and these areas. Because this constituency is spread over 20,000 square kilometers, it has oh, it is spread over. Uh, fire district, so it is a huge, huge area. Uh, so first, weather played actually they throw, the weather throws spanner at work. But despite all this, this constituency recorded 68 percent voting. More than 11 lakh, lakh people came out and vote. Half, almost half of them are women. So women participation was massive. Participation of first time voters are massive. So many. Elders who were uh, around 100 year age, they also came and cast their vote. So there was enthusiasm and there were different issues people were voting for. There were local issues, issues about land, issues about jobs, issues about, uh, you know, um, you know other, uh, other, uh, other local political factors. And there was also voting about the larger national issues and Prime Minister Modi factor. That was very important for the BJP supporters who came to vote for the BJP. Modi was the one single important factor for anybody I spoke to. It was Prime Minister Modi's leadership in this particular constituency. Uh, that the contest has been, you know, this uh, very strong from both the sides. Congress led a very effective campaign, so did the BJP, very, very effective campaign. Top leaders from Prime Minister to other top senior central ministers and UP chief, chief minister campaigned here. Now it is the turn now that they are campaigning going on for the second phase here in Jammu, where Congress has again direct contest with the, uh, you know, BJP has direct contest with the Congress in both these seats. Congress, BJP is seeking third term, like in yesterday, Dr. Jitender Singh was confident of winning the third term. And BJP also actually announced its victory, but so is, so is the Congress, they are also saying they are winning. But voters have decided the fate, who is winning, and on the result day we all will know who has won this seat. But it was first such election after abrogation of 370, when people got a chance to participate in this major election to decide who they want to vote for. Right. Uh, thank you, Nazir, Sam, Ratnadeep and Harsha for joining us and bringing us the roundup of what happened during the first phase of the elections. Now, at this point, I'll be joined by Amitabh Dawari and Aditi Fadnis. Uh, now, Mr. Tiwari, firstly, voter turnout had, you know, slightly dropped in most states. Uh, reporters, of course, saying that uh, there are several factors that affected it as well. But do you think this could have an impact on the predicted BJP win or uh, is the Modi magic still going to work? I think data-wise, if you say it is very difficult to say whether mm. a voter turnout dip or an increase mm. helps the incumbent party or the opposition. From 1977 to 2019, if you see 12 elections, because before that the same government came back to power, uh, there were seven elections where voter turnout increased. Out of them, the government changed four times, so almost half-half. But there were five instances when the voter turnout declined. And four out of five times, the government changed. So it's, it's very difficult to pinpoint what happens uh, because of a voter turnout increase or decrease. Parties will uh, 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 try to claim that this benefits them, but the data shows that there is no clear trend. We also need to see state by say, state, as you are showing, there are, there are only three states where the voter turnout has increased. Assam, Chhattisgarh, surprisingly, and uh, Meghalaya. And in most of the other states, the turnout has declined either marginally or significantly. So if we see seat by seat trend, there's, there's, there's also a trend there. In almost uh, 73 out of these 102 seats in 2019, 
voter turnout had increased and 43 people had lost the seats, 43 MPs. And 23 seats, the voter turnout had declined and 18 of the sitting MPs had lost. So it's a mixed bag. What happens is that generally parties which are CADA based are able to get out their voters either ways, whether it's a, uh, a, a sweep election or a very tight election. So we have to see the results and actually decide or pan out whether right. the voter turnout, who did not turn up is the is the basic question. Right. So we'll have to wait and see how it pans out. Absolutely. Now, Aditi Fadnis, uh, now talking about that, you know, state-wise, like uh, Mr. Tiwari mentioned, uh, Manipur also having faced ethnic conflicts. Several arrangements were made for displaced people to vote as well. A 10% dip in voter turnout, but it could also be seen as an electoral success because despite the tensions in the state, people have turned up to vote. Sure, it's a glass half empty uh, or a glass half full, depending on how you look at it. Uh, the voter turnout should have, could have dipped even more, uh, given the, the disturbed conditions. On the other hand, uh, as your reporter very uh, succinctly put it, uh, it could also be a protest vote. Mm. Uh, so people are voting with both hands for something that, that they don't agree with. Uh, it's hard to say at this point, we'll have to wait for the result. But I just want to make a, po uh, make a point on voter turnout uh, in terms of gender uh, uh, sort of equality or gender parity. Uh, women are coming out in larger and larger numbers to vote. And I think this is very important because uh, women's participation in uh, work, uh, as uh, shown by the periodic labor force uh, data, uh, suggests that there is direct correlation between women going out to work and their electoral literacy and their turnout in elections. Uh, so that's uh, something that we have to watch and political parties are not ignoring this. So they are taking this on, uh, on board and uh, many of them are uh, indirectly uh, exhorting women to vote, uh, knowing that the women are more likely to vote in their favor. So uh, uh, whether it's uh, Bihar uh, over the years, a number of very strong pro-women uh, uh, executive decisions uh, like uh, increasing the participation of women in reservation for women in uh, parliament in uh, panchayat raj bodies or uh, prohibition which is a, seen as a very pro-women uh, move. All these things are actually trying to tap into the new woman voter who is coming out to vote. Right. Um, last comments by Mr. Tiwari, like uh, Aditi Fadnes was mentioning, you know, not just voter turnout overall, but the demographics of it is also important. Like she mentioned, women uh, votes or uh, female votes are important, but it also comes down to caste arithmetic and community votes sometimes. Like in Rajasthan, the voter percentage did dip, uh, but we are seeing a lot of uh, community uh, communities who are feeling empowered to come forward and work uh, vote. So that sort of demographics is also important, don't you think, sir? Yeah, essentially uh, the women uh, voters are more than men in 12 to 13 states and in 2019 for the first time the women voter turnout overall was la was higher than men. So we don't yet have the gender wise numbers mm. released uh, from the election commission for phase one but that will be a very important factor to analyze because women voters generally are believed to be voting across caste and class lines on the basis of development and schemes which the Prime Minister Modi has announced. Then on the, if we come to the caste uh, dynamics as you have mentioned on in Rajasthan let's say or even in Western UP we have seen a dip in uh, uh, turnout. What has happened is that there has been some disillusionment among some sections of voters like the Jat community, farmers protest and even amongst the Rajputs because of some statements made by a minister of the PM Modi government. So this could have dampened the spirits of some particular caste or community. However, it is very surprising that when election commission, television channels like NDTV, uh, FM channels are uh, spreading awareness mm -hmm. campaigns about an increase in voter turnout and it has been increasing for the past three elections, we have seen a five, almost a 5% 5 dip in, in voter turnout in phase one and that needs to be analyzed not only by the election commission but by the political parties as well as to what are the reasons for these. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Amitabh Tiwari and Aditi Fannis for joining us and sharing your thoughts and analyzing the situation for us. That is the situation as far as the phase one is concerned. Parties are now preparing uh, for campaigns for the phase two of elections. We'll continue tracking the story for you. For now,